today's video, I'm gonna walk you through how to invest different buckets within your retirement portfolio. Hey everyone, I'm James Canole, founder of Root Financial, and I'm here to teach you what you need to know to create a secure retirement. What do I mean by investing different buckets in your portfolio? Well, sometimes when you're looking at retirement, it's fairly simple. You have income coming in from social security or pension or real estate or whatever it might be, and there's some fixed difference that needs to come from your portfolio. Other times, and this is far more common I would say, you retire and there's almost a staggered amount that's needed from your portfolio. Maybe that's because social security doesn't start right away, or you have a pension that kicks in later, or you'll have part-time income for the first few years of retirement, but then that will go away. What that creates is almost different buckets or almost different sections within your retirement, and you need to know how do you invest your portfolio to account for that. Well, let's take a look. Let's assume that you're retired, and with this, what you're gonna be looking at here is this graph. And on this graph, what you have on this side of the column is you have your expenses. And here, you have time. So if you retire right here, let's say age 65, maybe you don't collect Social Security right away. Let's assume it's you and a spouse, and one of you is gonna collect at 67, and one of you is gonna collect at age 70. Well, what does that mean for your portfolio? Well, your portfolio, the goal of it is to supplement your income to help you maintain your desired standard of living. So if we assume that your expenses are here, so they're going up with inflation, what we have to do is we have to understand where does your portfolio fit in at different stages of your retirement. Well, let's do this. Let's assume that you're gonna collect your social security at age 67. It may be your social security benefit uh, covers part of your expenses, but definitely not all. So we'll title this your social security. Then let's assume that your spouse also has social security, but they're not gonna collect until age 70. Well, at age 70, there's another level of income, but it still doesn't cover everything. So what does this mean for your portfolio? Well, your portfolio, it has to fill in these gaps here. But what you'll notice is these gaps aren't consistent. Or in other words, by, from 70 and beyond, there's one amount that needs to come from your portfolio. But when you first retire, there's a much larger amount. So how do you account for that? Well, what I like to do is think of this as different buckets. You almost have bucket number one, which is how do you cover these first couple years because there's one amount that you're gonna need from your portfolio. Then there's bucket two, which is gonna cover years three through five here. And then there's bucket number three that's gonna cover years six and beyond in this simple example. Why does this matter? Why do we go through the hassle of having different buckets? Well, we do it because different types of investments have different return expectations, and they also have different levels of certainty or lack of certainty in the short run. For example, let's take a look at a couple of different investments. What this chart is showing, this is a chart from Dimensional Funds, it is showing us this. It's saying, let's assume we have the S&P 500, which is one investment, and then we have a balanced strategy. That's 40% stocks, 60% bonds, and this is looking all the way back to 1973. Now, when we look at this, there's a couple things that stand out. Number one, if you look at the short term, look at this. The S&P 500, the range of potential returns you can expect from this is very, very significant. There's been some years where it's been high as 61%. So if you invested a dollar on in July of 1982, that dollar would have returned $61 or 61 cents over the next 12 months. That's a very strong return. There's also been some very bad returns there. Negative 43%. Had you invested everything in March of 2008, the next 12 month return, you were down over 43%. So the range of potential returns here is very large. Now compare that to the balance strategy. With the balance strategy, your one year return, the best one year return over this time, it's not gonna be as high. So that's 30, call it 34% as compared to the S&P 500 at 61. But the worst one year experience it ever had is also not as low. It was down 22% compared to the S&P 500, down over 43. So when we look at those range of returns, they're much lower. So the trade-off here is with an all stock portfolio, you're gonna have a much higher potential return going forward, but your range of outcomes is pretty significant in the short term. Compare that to a more balanced portfolio, you're gonna have diminished levels of long-term returns that you can expect, but your range of outcomes starts to narrow. 
Now let's not look at just one year, let's look five years out. If we look here at five years, this is where things start to get really interesting. The S&P 500, when we look at that, its best five year return was close to 30%. That's an annualized return of 30%. Had you invested in August of 1982, the next five years, you were very happy as an investor. You averaged 30% per year. But it also had a five year stretch where you lost over 6.5% per year. So that's not 6.5% total over five years, that's 6.5% annualized. So over 30% total downturn or around 30% total downturn over that time. Compare that to the balance portfolio. It's best five year return, very strong, but not as strong as an all stock portfolio, but it averaged about 20% per year. Again, that same start date of August of 1982. Here's the interesting thing. It's never had, at least during this time period, going back to the seventies, it's never had a five year experience where it's produced a negative return. Compare that to the S&P 500, which had a negative return of a cumulative 30% over this five year time period, the balance portfolio of your worst case scenario is only making 0.5% per year over five years. That's not that bad when compared to what would have happened if you were all stocks. Fast forward again to 10 years. So if we take this one step further, we've looked at one year, we've looked at five years. If we look at 10 years now, take a look at this. S&P 500, you see it's had a very strong 10 year return in the 1990s. It also had a 10 year time period where it lost 3.4% per year for a decade straight. That's not a fun experience. Go to this balance portfolio, it's best 10 year return, still very strong, but not as strong as the S&P 500. The trade off, it's worst ever 10 year experience during this time period was making 3.7%. So yes, well, what does this have to do with what we just looked at of trying to invest and supplement social security or pension or whatever it might be? Well, here's what it has to do. If we look back at our graph here, we know that there are some investments over the long term that are going to generate very strong returns, but they're going to have a lot of short term uncertainty. Those are great investments that we know we want to rely on for maybe this period and beyond. If we had almost another bucket here, but for this period right here, we want to make sure that we have an allocation. It's probably not all stocks. We want to know we can depend upon this allocation regardless of whether the market's up, down, or anywhere in between. So we probably want to look at something more conservative for this. Then maybe for your second bucket, here's three to five. Well, maybe we don't want to be super aggressive, but we also don't want to be too conservative because there is enough time there with a balanced to, to conservative strategy that we might do a little bit better. So maybe you look at something that's more balanced. And this is not a recommendation. This is just hypothetical. This is just for illustration, but understanding how different portfolio allocations fit in different parts of your plan. And then maybe for the long term, you're looking growth for the next bucket and maybe even aggressive growth for beyond. What that allows you to do is it helps you to understand how do different investments, what's the return potential, but also, and equally importantly, what's the uncertainty that I'm accepting and how long might I go without a positive return? And when we can start to align them in such a way to say, let's take the stuff that grows like crazy and make sure that we have long enough time to let it work its way out if it goes through some ups and downs. But let's make sure that's part of our portfolio because what's going to happen out here is inflation has taken the cost of everything higher and higher and higher. These investments might not be the best for this time period right here, though, where you need something more conservative. Now, when we're looking at all this, this doesn't mean that you need to open up four different accounts. You know, if you have one IRA, it doesn't mean you need one conservative, one balance, one growth, one aggressive growth. But what you can start to do is as you're looking at this, all of this can flow into one portfolio. So how do you understand what your overall asset allocation should be? It can all still be part of one portfolio, but is it a reflection of the different components that you have here? So why this is important is because when you're looking at your retirement, you're going to have some standard of living or desired standard of living, and it's going to cost some number of dollars to accomplish that. As you start to understand what income sources are you going to have that aren't from your portfolio, what you're going to understand is what floors, what income floors will you have? And then you want to align your portfolio to support that or to supplement that. That might mean you have sections of portfolio income where it might start off higher and then get lower and lower as social security or pension kicks in. Or it might be the reverse. Maybe you have part-time income for the first several years of retirement. So there's less pressure on your portfolio, but then that goes away and more and more comes out of your portfolio later. 
Regardless of what your situation is though, make sure you understand the relationship between your expenses, your non-portfolio income, and your portfolio so that you can make sure that all of them are aligned together. So now that you understand how to invest different portfolio buckets, the next question is how soon before retirement should you begin adjusting your portfolio? Be sure to check out this video above to find out. Thanks for watching. This is James Canole with Root Financial Partners. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to share it with someone else who you think would benefit from this information. And also, please be sure to like and subscribe for more content just like this. Finally, if you'd like to see how we help clients create a secure retirement, be sure to check out our website at rootfinancialpartners.com. Thank you.